In case you didn't notice by the chunky bezel and rear ports, this is the Lenovo Legion 5 Pro from 2022, and it is absolutely the laptop you should buy in 2023 for multiple reasons. First and foremost, I know RTX 40 series are being released, and yes, they're going to have more performance, but the real question is, is that performance necessary to your workflow, to your needs, and to your lifestyle? Or could you save a few hundred dollars by going with a 2022 model? And in this video, I'm going to show you why, in my opinion, it's absolutely the case for most users. Now, first and foremost, the pricing on these models right now is absolutely ridiculous. You can get an RTX 3060 version with 16 gigs of RAM and the Ryzen 7 6800H for $1,399. Or you can go all the way up to the RTX 3070 Ti version for $1599. Now, that is available on either Amazon or Lenovo.com, and if you wanna check the live pricing, I'll put links in the description below. If you do make a purchase, we'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you, but of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, I've done full reviews about the build quality and usability of this laptop. The build quality is incredible, the usability is great, the ports are extremely extensive. The only thing it's lacking, in my opinion, is an SD card reader, which, makes me sad, but I can get over being that this laptop is so well priced, so well built, has such great customer support, and is upgradable for both M.2 slots and two RAM sticks. So the customization of this laptop is incredible, and the ability to modify it for your specific needs is great. Now before we get in and check out the benchmarks, I've done a full video comparing the RTX 3070 Ti version to the RTX 3060 version, and you can hear my full thoughts on that, so I'll link that up at the end of this video. For now, I'm going to just show you the charts and let you get familiarized with what it looks like and what kind of performance you would be getting out of either of these models. Now jumping into Photoshop, you can see that the RTX 3060 version scores an 881, which is plenty of performance inside of Photoshop. You will have no bottlenecks with the RTX 3060 version, and you'll even have higher ceiling capabilities with the RTX 3070 Ti. However, in my personal opinion, for both Photoshop and After Effects, I would go for the 3060 and then upgrade the RAM to 32 gigs. I would save that money and skip the higher priced GPU to get more RAM. This will give you better multitasking to give you even better performance in both Photoshop and After Effects than the RTX 3070 Ti version with 16 gigs of RAM. Now, if you're going to be looking at 4K video editing, I would say the same thing for you. Because if you look at the playback and drop frames for both the RTX 3060 and the RTX 3070 Ti, it has zero drop frames at full quality playback, which means you don't need any more performance than the RTX 30 series for 4K video editing. So if you're waiting around for the RTX 40 series and Ryzen 7000, you're literally wasting your money because it's going to give you no better performance than what you have right now. Now let's consider the export times for 4K. Looking at 4K in the export times, it's a 2 minute and 52 second export out of the 3070 Ti and a 3 minute and 2 second export out of the 3060 version. Now, if you want faster export times than that, then I would recommend going with Intel. For Intel, you can get a 2 minute and 36 second export time. Yes, I am anticipating the export times may get a little bit better out of 13th gen from Intel or Ryzen 7000 or the RTX 40 series. However, do you need faster export times? Are you willing to pay for faster export times? I personally would not be, being that I can get this laptop for about $1,400. That is just an insane bang for buck in regards to the performance and build quality. Now, let's go ahead and shift our focus to 6K video editing while we're on this subject. For 6K video editing, I think you will see some benefits going up to RTX 40 series, 13th gen from Intel, Ryzen 7000, because in order to get smooth playback for red footage, or in order to get really smooth playback for B-RAW, you're gonna wanna be in the RTX 3070 Ti camp, okay? You're going to see zero drop frames from B-RAW for the RTX 3070 Ti, and you're still going to see 243 drop frames from RED footage. Now, these are nine-minute clips placed into Premiere Pro, about 16,177 total frames in that project, and these are the amount of frames that it's dropping. So we're getting very close to that point where the amount of performance meets the requirements as far as RED footage is concerned. We hit it here with B-RAW. But remember, that's one clip in the timeline. As soon as you start adding motion graphics and music and more clips, it'll start to maybe slow down your timeline a little bit. But honestly, B-RAW is great inside of this timeline, and you could really get away with the RTX 3070 Ti for a $1,599 laptop. 
really, really awesome. But if you're going to be a red footage user, we're getting closer to the point where the performance is matching the needs. Now let's get into 3D modeling. That is an area where I see more improvements month over month, year over year. And as far as Blender is concerned, you're definitely going to benefit from the RTX 3070 Ti. You see a 931 over the 694 from the RTX 3060. Now, I definitely think 40 series is going to see a big bump in performance. And so waiting around for 40 series may be a good idea for Blender. Now, looking at Autodesk 3ds Max, you can see we score a 245 from the RTX 3070 Ti. Definitely the premier choice if you're going to be picking up this laptop. However, looking at the latest 40 series, I recently was able to test an RTX 4090 inside of the MSI GT77 Titan. This is a sneak preview into that data. I've yet to launch the full review, but it's coming soon. For Autodesk 3ds Max, for an i9-13900K, I think it might have even been the HK, and RTX 4090, we scored a 266 inside of Autodesk 3ds Max. Now compare that to the 245 out of the RTX 3070 Ti, and it's not a big difference. However, where I did see a big difference was looking at the MSI GT77 with Autodesk Maya at a 502 and PTC Creo at a 398. Now, for the Legion that you're looking at with the RTX 3070 Ti, Autodesk Maya scored a 351. So that means the new 4090 beat it out by 150 points. And PTC Creo was a 241. So about 100 points on PTC Creo. The 40 series is seeing that much of an improvement. So with those numbers in mind, it may be beneficial for you to wait if 3D modeling and architecture is what you're doing on your computer. But other than that, right now, this 2022 model, which is on crazy sales, is plenty of performance for basically everything else I mentioned. Comment below and let me know your thoughts. Let me know your hesitations. I'm super curious. And if you're interested in winning a Lenovo Legion 5 Pro absolutely free, well, when we pass 100,000 subscribers, we'll be giving away three Legion 5 Pros that Lenovo sent over for us to give away once we pass 100,000 subscribers. So definitely subscribe, ring the bell, so you don't miss out on all the details of that giveaway. I'll see you in the next video.